and I have a house minimum, I will not turn on my machine for less than my house minimum. And if you don't want to pay that, I don't want to work with you. Yep. yep. <laughs> it's just that simple. And yep. you'll find that the majority of the people, it's not that I don't want to work with you. It's just that I know that there's someone standing right behind you who is more than happy to pay my house minimum. Yep. And that is the case yep. most of the time. So if you're afraid of coming up with that house minimum, don't be. Because someone may say, "Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. it's just it's just three initials on a on a money clip. I, I I'm not going to give you forty five dollars for that." The people that scoff usually fucking pay anyway. <laughs> they do. They usually, do. Usually, very oh. very rare that people are like, "Have a nice day and leave." <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to the Laser Source Podcast, the number one podcast. If you are looking to grow or scale your laser business, I have the crew with me, plus Michael, slowly becoming a regular from Laser Engraving 911. What's up, bro? How you doing? What's up? And uh, Matt, good sir. Good day. Good evening. How's it going, guys? Your every day, your your little like background situation is kind of like upscaling. And upscaling. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It's growing. It's gonna be a better. Charizard soon. I'm really excited. Yep. Yep, charts. <laughs> Soup mega mega evolution. Basically, we're gonna just go ahead and use the sunstone. No big Chill. deal. Chill. Yeah, no big deal at all. Kyle, how are you doing, man? Yo, yo, and uh, Jimmy's here. Jimmy, what are you working What's on? Guess what's going on back there? Oh yeah, I'm playing with my canvases. Nice, nice. So, um, I don't think we had a particular topic in mind today so we're really just kind of opening it up for q a we got a lot of questions the last couple episodes and we had so much to talk about during those topics that we didn't really have time to get to your guys questions so if you have questions feel free to shout them out i'm just gonna kill time and talk about lasers in the meantime also let's say hi to some of the people in live chat because i uh it's been a minute uh since we've done like little call outs here light speed engraving was first today metal for light speed mm -hmm. uh andrew's here yeah. quasar What's up, Jack? Jack, all as always, love it. Night Sky was here 30 minutes early, killing it. Uh, Beam It Up Laser Works. What's up, Beam It? And uh, the SD, what's going on? Uh, J Mac thinks he was first. He's a little <laughs> confused, but it's a good effort, J Mac. Good effort, bro. J Mac. And uh, let's see, Open Host, what's going on? Love, pleasure to see you as always. Love. Carlos bought a polar dot 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 polar Ooh. camel or omtech polar polar express yeah. <laughs> I hate that movie so much dude uh ronda fleming is here what's up ronda big h hey. lots of people tonight thanks for coming out everybody miranda's here as usual to babysit make sure that we don't get ourselves into trouble thunder laser what's up thunder and uh john an another one kind of becoming a regular i feel like i'm seeing john's name more and more lately and uh clinton Clinton Hood, who's going to kick us right off? Does anybody have any glass acrylic work for protecting your eyes from CO2 laser when used in an enclosure? Um, well, I, my recommendation is always no IR, no IR laser .com. Is that where you get your, your stuff too, Michael? Uh, I believe that is still where I get my stuff. Yeah, because yeah. they just have such a wide spectrum. And, yeah. Uh, Good quality products. So if you go to their website, it's noirlaser.com. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. Um, they're just the best. Uh, they have a link, a, a tab up at the top of their website called Laser Shield Windows. And you can buy them by the square foot and get them custom cut. So if you're planning an enclosure, they'll just and just cut it out for you. Yeah. No problem. And you're done. Uh, and the CO2 material in general from them is very, very inexpensive. Where normally you're going to spend like $200 for a pair of safety glasses from no IR. The CO2 ones are typically about 50 bucks. So the square foot, the per square foot cost should be pretty low. Uh, I actually got, I got, dude, I got some new no IR glasses in the mail today. Um, yeah, they're pretty sick. So these are, so these are, all right. So these are two of my favorites. They're the uh, YG5s which are fiber spectrum protection. So these are OD5 plus at 1064, um, and they're OD5 plus at 
UV 355. So these are decent for like having around the shop. These are my CO2 ones. They're just super clear, easy, no problem. And then these are my old diode laser glasses. These are called the KTYs. They're very dark uh, red, uh, almost like a like a burgundy. Uh, very very dark. And I I upgraded these to my DBYs. These are very very cool glasses. So you get uh, OD7 plus at 355 nanometers for UV. You get OD7 plus at 1064 nanometers for fiber and you get uh, OD7 plus for 455 nanometers for visible light laser too. So they cover all three of the big ones uh, in, in one pair of goggles. And they're actually not too dark. Uh, they're, they're not too bad. Dark enough that you're not going to get like welder's eye, but not so dark that you can't see your framing. So these are DBYs. Uh, they're, they're very cool. They came in today. So I'm super stoked on those. I also upgraded from the goggles because the go I didn't like not having my peripheral vision. These like slide like right over my glasses and like you've got full peripheral coverage over here and they're just like solid one piece plastic. So anyway, uh, just some mail I got today. Kind of solid win. Yeah, it's all done. Yeah, Alex, I remember when we were first, uh, when we first, I think, got the lasers, we were using really dark glasses. They were like black. And yeah, we went out. like go, Jimmy has on. <laughs> and yeah. we went out to go do the training at LMT and mm. And you remember he was wearing the nice ones right. from you No know, IR, mm -hmm. and we were both like, "Hey, yeah, you can actually see your work through those." <laughs> where did you get those? And he was right. like, "Oh, you want to know where to get those?" And 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 then from that day on, it was just like, "You can see the keyboard, well, right? You can see yeah, the you monitor. Pay, yeah. you pay pay good money." for a good protection, but also when you pay good money, you're able to actually see what's around you and what's right. going on. Because the, exactly. the, 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 the non-quality glasses that actually protect your eyes are very dark. They have a very low visible light transmission right. value. <clears throat> the expensive ones have a good high visible light transmission values. That's one of the reasons I like the, uh, the YG5s are practically clear. Uh, you can almost see right through those. I'm not doing them a lot of justice right now because they're folded up, but uh, there's there's almost nothing there. Uh, it's just a, a tiny little tent. So, yeah, Michael and I have been shopping from Noir for a long time. They're they're super great. Um, whoa, let's see. <laughs> That's a big bump. Big bump. Yeah, big bump while we were just chatting. Um, you may start highlighting a couple. Before, before we do that, I just want to say hi to everybody we missed so far. Joel. Hey, Joel and Mike and Gunzi and Bill and Mike C just got the FG1 from no IR for fiber. Nice, I'll have to check that out. I don't think I've looked at that pair too closely and go ahead with the question, Scott. Um, so Garrett starting off, is there a possibility that the laser everything crew will get an XY table for a Galvo or even a 3D Galvo and demonstrate how those would function down the road? Mm hmm. I don't know, Kyle, is there? I mean, there's always a possibility. Uh, at least right now in my shop, I don't have a huge need for an XY table because I just don't do anything big enough to really necessitate something like that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a 3D Galvo at some point, but yeah. um, I, I have a lot of <laughs> I have a lot of things already, uh, you know, stacked up in front of me. I want to get through before I commit to any. Uh, Kyle has three lazy any other. Yeah, I have, I have many lasers. <laughs> yeah, what about you, Matt? Uh, um, do you see any? Do you see any XY table in your future? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's to me. I've always been the kind of guy who is practical because I've got the small footage shop. It's kind of like if I had it, a re like if somebody had a product for me to make and it was gonna be something to get into. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it's definitely something that would be cool. You yeah. know. Yeah. So. What about you, Michael? Yeah, anything on Laser 911 about XY tables? Um, you know, there's a really, uh, you know, I, I, I love watching the videos of those machines work. Yeah. And there's going to be a shop somewhere where, where that's going to be necessary to have one of those, especially with like the, you know, the 3D Galvo and, and the automated, everything automated. But I think it's a, it, you're going to have a really specific use for uh something that you have a lot of parts 
a lot of different planes that you need to program in that you want it to zoom to and then and then focus to and then go over here and do to that. Yeah. Like I don't have I, and, I mean, I've been doing this for how many how many years now? I mean, there's there hasn't been a job. How do I say this? There hasn't been a job that's come my way where it wouldn't have just been faster to set the part in and automatically focus to it and get it lined up and move on to the next part. Yeah. Right. But that's just my shop. You know, there could be a mass production facility where it makes sense to have that technology in your cabinet. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I would do it just for science. That's what we do here. We just explore things just for the fun of it, except all of my machines behind me have EasyCAD 2 light boards, except for the UV, which is an EasyCAD 3 board that I want to ditch for an EasyCAD 2 board so that I can use, use it with light burn. So I don't, I don't, I don't think that I probably even have the, the kit to do it. Maybe that'll be something we put on the list to brush on before I downgrade. Or maybe, you know, we'll get lucky and we'll get EasyCAD 3 support for light burn. Um, <laughs> but um, to, to throw it in there too, J Mac says, dude, I'll do some 3D. Yeah. yeah, for sure. J Mac, get on it. Do some 3D. Yeah. Um, can, al can always use more knowledge out there. Yeah. Um, Ryan says, I struggle with annealing stainless steel on a fiber galvo. Please point me in the right direction with resources. Yeah, I mean, we we have an episode on the channel. First thing uh, I would I would do is find the I think it's just called how to engrave and anneal steel. So I would go watch that first. It's very simple and straightforward. But the the trick with annealing is a higher frequency. Um, the the higher you get that frequency, the lower the impact is going to be on the metal. So you stop ablating and you start annealing. Uh, if you if you don't have a laser that has a super high frequency range, you can defocus a little bit, and that will make your dot size a little bigger, which will also reduce the impact. Or your third option would be to get a larger lens. So if you're on like a 110, get like a 300, and then just turn the power down a, a little bit, and that has the same exact effect. The 300 millimeter lens is going to make that dot size a little bigger, so you're not smacking the metal so hard uh, because you're you're. Essentially, if you're struggling to get an anneal, it's because your your impact on the actual metal is too hard and you're ablating it. You're removing material and that's not what you want. So um, high frequency if you can. If you can't, defocus. If you don't want to defocus, get a larger lens. That That's the kind of the... the just the spark notes on that. Alex, yeah. what, what would be a what would be considered a high frequency? Yeah, that's a good note too. Um, so I think I I don't know about you, Michael. I've had success like a hundred plus. You know, a hundred plus. Uh, it's maybe even like one twenty plus uh, kilohertz, and you yeah. you really start to get to the point. Depending on your wattage, of course, uh, yeah. and there's Where extra rules about uh, mopas. Yeah, your, so it frequency it's not, power. It's not that straightforward but i would say like it you know for most people like 120 ish kilohertz and higher you're not going to be able to get an ablation uh you're only going to be annealing so yeah so would you agree uh, yeah. i agree with that yeah, yeah. To, to add to the the resources that you have available to you i've provided a link to um a black marking on the stainless steel video mm. from alan mm, the little z mark from way back the in the z mark YouTube history yeah um there are some tips there for defocusing uh, to get uh, heating effect instead of ablating. Uh, yeah. and other good gold nuggets of info. I so, mean, the old the old out. trick from the the Michael and I days is to focus, start the laser, and then defocus it while the laser is running. At some point, it's going to stop sparking and it's just going to glow, and I've you're not gonna, you're not going to you're not going to hear it anymore because yep. when it ablates you can hear that yep. so defocus until you get the glow and then you're going to be kind of in in a neal, a neal territory too if you have to defocus in order to achieve it yeah yeah, yeah i'm doing a bunch of surgical parts right now where i have to do an anneal mark um yeah. and it's really critical that i don't ablate anything on anything. these parts right uh yeah. and one of the settings i have our old setting alex that i still use but i yep. created a new setting about a year ago where i actually do more passes faster mm. Mm. okay and it actually gets even darker than our original like setting heat, heat layers. Like, so i'm kind of yeah. i'm kind of just going whoop, 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 you know like real m much faster 
-hmm. and it's actually a quicker mark. It's darker. And, you know, I bet, I bet if I screwed around even more, I could find it even, you know, there's, there's a lot of different settings out there for a good black mark, but sometimes trying to get it all black in one shot may not be the right Avenue. You might want to go by it really quick a few times yep. to, and each time it goes by, it'll get darker and darker and darker. You know? I'd be a believer of that. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be yeah. cool to see. Then maybe a laser 911, laser engraving 911 episode on that at some point. Oh, have you noticed I haven't even dived into the fiber? I yet. know, dude. I'm aware. I've, <laughs> I've been kind of curious about that. So I'm looking forward to your this. breakout episode right there. If you guys haven't seen Michael's channel, go subscribe to it. It's laser engraving 911. It's the first result that comes up, just pop that into YouTube um, because he's got a lot of cool stuff over there. What do we have next, Kyle? What's next? Uh, Joel says, any advice on how to properly price jobs? That is a Michael and Matt question. Michael, I'll throw it to you first, man. No, I want Matt to throw it to you. I just did a whole video. I just did a whole video on my channel that you just mentioned, uh, called on 10 reasons topic? why laser engraving uh, businesses will fail. And pricing is one of the things I cover in there. It's oh, great. The first, it's so now I'm going to just get like the master just is like, I already explained that. Let's see if this idiot listened. <laughs> no, 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 no. You go ahead. You so guys... here's here's me, I guess. Um and sorry, I'm like <laughs> not looking up. Let me see here one second. There we go. Um so for me, the way I've done things uh as a small business starting up and uh for one offs, I mean you're gonna price a little higher because it's you're you have to, in my opinion. Um, unless it's some kind of an entry point deal where basically you're pricing them for one just to like show them a product and like here you go um that that's kind of my thing but for me it's usually 300 percent like if that helps you understand so if you have an eight dollar item it's gonna be like 25 bucks right because then what ends up happening is if you mess up a blank you can cover the cost of a blank so if you have to do 50 of them um and for me i always buy about Cause I'm still, you know, plus like my thing is I'm building my, um, inventory. Like I know Alex isn't a big fan of having inventory, but I have so many people who do like, I, I need like a cup by tomorrow. Do you have this? And I can then just say, well, yeah, I've got this and I can you know pop one out. Um, so for me, I usually will order like an extra, uh, 10% of something. So if I get 50 items, I'll order five just for mess ups and also just to have a couple extra at the end. Um, and so 300% means if I mess up an $8 item, I can cover it and still be profitable in the mess up. So basically it pays for it and covers it. Um, and also if I don't mess anything up and everything goes great and awesome, then I made a good profit. Um, so that's usually what I do for companies, for nonprofits and other stuff. You can price things a little differently. Um, like I usually work with charities and a lot of 4013Cs or 5013Cs, the, the nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you can kind of work with them to do what's best and what you think, you know, but at the end of the day, if you're trying to run a business, you do need to make a profit. Right. Um, cause that's how, like, literally we were talking about the shop getting better here. Um, I had a really nice job where I normally don't charge the extra $10 an item, the extra $5 an item, whatever. And I did, and it helped cover the cost of a new workshop table. So like, there you go. Right. Yeah. So yeah. at a certain point you have to realize like you have to invest in yourself. You do have to charge a little more. Um, because like we talked about, I think a couple of weeks ago, you know, you don't want to be in that race to the bottom with people. Um, yep. that's, that's not what you want to do Good if answer. you're trying to turn this into a business. Now, if this is just a side gig and you're trying to pay off your machine or buy a couple of extra little doodads, you know, it's, it's what you're trying to do with it, I guess is my answer. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. I, li I like that 300% rule. That's like it's just something easy math. That's like, yeah, that's like tangible, easy math that just people that maybe don't have like an extensive business background can just be like, I can apply that, you know, like that's very applicable. And by the way, if you do that 300% should cover um, it, you know, like it, when now that's only for like certain items, but like if you were going to make like a uh, an ornament and the material only costs $1.50, you're probably not going to want to charge seven dollars for the you know ornament that's where like what are you doing with it afterwards because for me like a cup is like seven about seven to eight dollars and then i really just have to give it a wipe put it into a box that's a, i'm okay with that but if i had to take it and then like voice has those pieces that he has to cut out and then place them and this and that so you do have to factor in work time too and labor 
So yep. just depending on the product you make, factor in labor time. Uh, mm-hmm. For me, like these glass ornaments, the, the labor time is I put it on the thing, I take it off and put it into a box. So I don't, I'm not going to kill somebody on my labor there. Yep. There you go. Yep. What do you think, Michael? Uh, that's all good stuff. Um, I will add to that and uh, I will mention something that I mentioned in my video that uh, I always have a house minimum. Okay. So what you were just talking about, Matt, was you were talking about doing production work. You're yeah. talking about, hey, if you buy a, a case of 24 cups from me, how do you price them? You want right. me to give you 50 wooden keychains? How do you price those? Right. right. So I deal a lot more with uh, people bringing me things that they want engraved. Yeah. Watches, n- bachelor gifts, you know, small run, uh, what I call, you know, a, a pair of, you know, champagne flutes, uh, cake server set, cutting boards, um, high end, you know, sometimes I do some firearm work. Okay. So I have. Here's the shit out of me. <laughs> well, you know, uh, <laughs> That's just that. That's, yeah, yeah. But it needs well, to get done. A, what I'm saying a, is, a job is, shop, man. Is yeah. I have a, I'm a job Bigger, shop. Big I reward, have, baby. And I have a house minimum. I will not turn on my machine for less than my house minimum. And if you don't want to pay that, I don't want to work with you. Yep. yep. <laughs> it's just that simple. And yep. you'll find that the majority of the people, it's not that I don't want to work with you. It's just that I know that there's someone standing right behind you who is more than happy to pay my house minimum. Yep. Right? That is the case yep. most of the time. So if you're afraid of coming up with that house minimum, don't be. Because someone may say, oh, 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 oh it's just it's just three initials on a on a money clip. I, 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 I'm not going to give you forty five dollars for that. But it's that it's the artwork. It's the it's the preparation. Yeah, but they don't understand right. that. And, they, and right. you can explain it to them. They don't care about. Yeah. That. It, you know, I experienced working with you, Michael, to the people that scoff usually fucking pay anyway. <laughs> they do. They usually, do. It's very, very rare that people are like, have a nice day and leave. <laughs> like, yeah. So. Like, so set your house minimum. Don't bend on it. Always, always take, you know, you know what you need to figure out what you're, what you are worth and what you yep. need to make a living. That Great is advice. super important. If you can't figure that out and what you need to be not, and it's not by minute, by hour, it's just, look, I have a specialized service and a skill that I'm providing to you. I'm going to make your stuff great. When I hand this back to you, you're going to be like, Poof, right. And I know what that's worth. And that's why I'm going to tell you, this job is blank amount of money. Okay. And it, it varies. You know, I have a flat rate for firearm work and it starts at $65. I don't care if it's one little number on your firearm. If it's yep. one little mark, doesn't matter. <laughs> it's going to be $65 and it just goes up from there. Yep. Yep. So, I, I mean, like one of the things that we say on the podcast all the time that resonates with this is that if you and, and again, this is like a, a laser sourceism at this point, but uh, if you don't value your time, nobody else is going to. Right. Yep. So very good. Um, well yeah, said. Well yeah, said. yeah. You absolutely have to, you know. The house, I, I'm kind of liking the house minimum thing. That kind of makes a lot of yeah, sense. Yeah, that's something you know very little about, isn't oh, it, Jimmy? Well, I know. <laughs> hey, dude, you open the gate. <laughs> Jimmy's got a Jimmy's got a freebie problem right now. Jimmy's a big believer in the the no, theory that if you give a million dollars worth of stuff away, you'll get eight million dollars worth of business back. No, sometimes I fail, but other times, you know, you got to gain people's interest, and all they really got is my Facebook page. So I know what people want. So I will, and then you make it for them I'll for free it, and give it to them. <laughs> but then, but then I, but then I will get business from that also because as you're getting it out there and people see it. And then boom. So, but I see both ends. But you're right. I'm sure you're probably more. I'm right sure the than truth I is in the middle somewhere, Jimmy. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. it's, it's between us somewhere. I'm probably a little right. You're probably a little oh, right. And yeah. to, to add to what Jimmy's saying, and it also goes to what you're saying. What's interesting, and it also ties in with the bike scene too. Like, um, I made a cup for someone local here in town just because they own a shop too that I go to all the time. It's one of my favorite places to go to. And I made a cup for him and they were like, oh my God, this is dope, dude. Thanks. Like, yeah, I really appreciate it. I was like, yeah, no problem, man. I just was, I had a, a red cup that went with your shop. Here you go, you know? And they're like, oh, that's awesome, dude. And there really was nothing behind it besides me. Just, I had an extra red thing and I kind of needed to get rid of it. And I was like, but you, you did go. it for a reason, Matt. 
No, <laughs> well, for a reason. Not, well, no, okay, can we point out nice. a difference here, though, too? Matt is giving what? away free stuff to businesses, and Jimmy is giving well, free stuff and away so to Well, so here's people. what happened, though. Listen, though, and this is what it uh, kind of goes back to what everybody said, because I, I really was doing it altruistically, meaning, like, I gave it away with no intent besides just here you go. Also, you know, they, the person was like, here, here's some free breakfast on me. I was like, oh, well, I mean, I, you don't have to, but thanks. But the cool thing was I just got a phone call today from someone that's like, hey, um, I was uh, – in the store today and I was talking to them about trying to get some Christmas items for my staff. And they said that you've got a great company um, and I should reach out to you. So could you give me a call back? So I literally got a lead on a job by not even trying to do. So that's kind of what Jimmy's saying, but that's one of those things too. going. I really wanted to touch on what Michael said, which is when people, uh, she said, I Googled your, and so this is where like the, your work speaks for yourself. I think is what Michael's saying. Like when people scoff at $65 or whatever, if you've got a portfolio of items that you've made and people can see what you do, that, that feeling he's talking about, that's what people are willing to pay for. Like that. Oh my God, this is exactly what I wanted. You know? And if you guys, by the way, just quick, quick uh, plug. If you guys haven't seen it, Matt has an episode up on laser everything about how to set up a Google, my business page so that you appear in Google search results. It's a great way to showcase your work and make you findable in your local area. We go on and on about the benefits of that. Well, uh, and that's exactly on, what happened today. Yeah. So the lady, it. the lady said, I Googled you while I was sitting there and I saw some of the stuff you've made and I want to get some cups from you. Yeah. So I saw the one cup that you made for the, you know, for the person. And then I saw other items in your shop and I want to talk to you about this and also some other mm. stuff. And I was like, Oh, sweet. So having that portfolio, having the work that shows you're worth it. And then just making connections is what Jimmy's talking about. That's a, that's a big thing. You know? Yeah. Because me, yeah. local work, like like Alex, I've known Alex for three years now, and he had a successful business, but he was all local work. Most of yep. Alex's work was local. I would yeah. prefer to go non-local. Not for hmm. me. That's for, just, it works. Non-local works better for me. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because where I live, and I live in a small town where, you know, you know how it is. So I... I, I <laughs> It's a tough call. One of the things that we've talked about on the channel before is if you establish a local market first, it will help fund your outreach to the non-local market. Yeah. You use those smaller local jobs to pay for a website, to pay for Google advertising, to pay to, to get that outreach so that you can start reaching outside of your county, outside of your state. But you have to you have to have a base first, a steady stream of income. And then you reinvest that into your outreach and you can you can reach a little further. It, it gives you the ability to reach a little further. We we are 26 minutes into this episode. And we've answered like, like three questions. Five. So I'm going to keep going. Uh, you voice should. is here. Just so you guys know. Hey, voice, voice is here now. What's up, voice? How you doing, man? Oh, just dealing with some family drama. So I'm not oh. in bed. Oh no, dude! I'm so sorry well, to hear that. You kids look, you are look a bitch okay. Problem, no, 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 yeah, yeah, don't e stop emergencystop.net. Um, <laughs> Big eight. Wait, yeah, Voice's do beard. It, do it. Voice's beard. Big age says Lipern user. I uh, need to add a 110 lens. Hmm. I don't have the corrections file for a 110. The 175 that came with the SFX fiber works fine. Advice on how to proceed getting a 110 going. Yes. Um, so fun fact, your corrections file is usually going to follow your lens because your lens is the biggest factor in what changes. So if you have two 110 lenses, you're, you're probably going to see a big difference between the two of them on your corrections file if you do a correction for both. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have some links for you. Uh, first off, if you are on Lightburn and it's simply not tangible for you to switch to EasyCAD, there's a guide for you. Alternatively, here's the guide uh, playlist that Alex did on uh, Lightburn for uh, Lightburn for Galvo, excuse me, Crash Course, mm-hmm. um, and I believe it's it's one of the first couple episodes. Uh, yeah. it teaches you how to hot swap between Lightburn and EasyCAD, and when you hot swap to EasyCAD, you open up the ability to run Core File, and there's a video on that as well. Yep, that will get you going, and uh, that's. That's all we're going to cover on this one. <laughs> yeah, really. If you if you haven't, because this th- this is a big rabbit hole question. But if you haven't, go watch the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. It's literally designed it's, for this, and it's something it's we cover. very involved. It's not something we can cover. 
uh, yeah, now. live right now. But there are there are some great resources for you. And if you get stuck, there are links to the Discord and Facebook down in the description. They're free, and yes. uh, we can we can try to help you out, or someone in the community can try to help you out uh, down there to kind of nudge you along in the right direction. But those are good it, resources, Kyle. Thank you. It really helps to see yep. it in video form. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. can't can't recommend that highly enough. Yep. Um, Mike says. I was looking at the DBY, but I was concerned about the range since it tops out at 1070. Uh, I don't have that open at the moment, but I can open it up because I'm pretty sure that even though we're not going to be at like 7.9 or whatever, uh, it's still it ramps down really kind of slowly. Is it? Yeah. Is it a slow ramp? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. From what I remember when you're showing me it, it it it, so it ramps at, down a little, but it's like above six point eight. At ten ninety, it's still OD five point seven, and that's a legitimate OD five point seven, which I think is still better than the Chinese stuff that you're getting in the mail with your laser. So I, I'm not super concerned about it. And again, I have the YG fives. So if I'm really doing something super reflective and I'm I'm crazy concerned about like you know like if I'm copper. doing copper, yeah, I, I'll put the YG just put the YG fives on. Like I have a I have a pair for that. But the DBY will be a nice convenience thing so that when I'm just kind of running between machines or whatever, you know, I can just pop them on. Unless I plan on sticking my face in the the laser path of the CO2, I should be good with those. So um, yeah, I mean, you're to- fair point, totally fair point. Um, but again, at 1090, you're still getting, what was it? Uh, 5.7, almost OD6, uh, which is like, if Chris was here, he'd be like, it's 0.00000006%, you know, whatever. Uh, so, you know, I'll take my chances. I think we got something physics. Yep. And J Mac says, I'll do 3d. Mm. Yep. Just bring that up again. Yep. Um, Carlos says, do y'all got an opinion on the OM tech polar? Light speed engraving has one. Looks cool. I asked Ohm Tech for one, and they told me to shove it. So, uh, uh, all yet. I know about it is it's a little machine. It's a little guy. Little guy, yeah, for sure. Um, a little guy. Even I think it's even that. I won't worry about that little guy. Uh, <laughs> I think it's uh, more or less same footprint size as the light object behind you. It's just. You think? I thought I thought it looked a little smaller than that. Honestly, I, I think it's, it's way shorter. I know that the wide. I think the they, wide I thought they put the polar out to compete with the uh, yeah. Wiki Cloud. Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's more like Glowforge bigger. format. Oh, I thought it was a little bigger. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know because OmTech doesn't send me one. OmTech send me a polar. And uh, yes. I saw a video of someone reviewing the polar recently, and I was like, "Oh, look at this little thing." And they mentioned, I forget who it was, that the reason it looks so much like the cloud is because the same factory that does the cloud is working with Polar and they're kind of, you know. Yeah, sure. So uh, you just put a divider up in the wall and it's a new That was mentioned in the video that uh, they're kind of all in the same. Bro, and you know what? I'm sure their next door neighbor is the people making the Glowforge. And (laughs) I'm sure... I'm uh, sure yeah, that the, the cloud was made by people who quit from over there and then moved across the street. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that's the way it goes over there, dude. Shared yeah. resources. Totally. Yeah. yeah, that's a very um, nice way to say that, Kyle. It looks yeah. like a pretty cool little little unit, though. I, dude, I just want to play with yeah. one because it looks fun. <laughs> yeah, every everybody likes a, a a little thing to play with, fun. right? A, a, a little guy. A little guy. Andrew F. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> The phrasing uh, LMA, of the last yeah. minute's worth Guys, is, is just golden. Uh, go check out the LMA. It's the number one way to support the channel. You can find out more over at masters.lasereverything.net. Yes. Uh, Beam Up says, I have better luck annealing with a 220 over my 110. Yes. So a lot sense. of that has to do with dot size. The the density, you're not digging at the metal so much. It's kind of your, like... Your uh, energy density. Yeah. You don't want to dig anything. Yeah, because yeah. it's like focusing with a magnifying glass, right? We don't want to burn the ants. We just want to like kind of air fry them a little bit. You know, we, <laughs> uh, we want a larger suntan. dot. Suntan. <laughs> a little suntan. Uh, Love says, how are you feeling, Kyle? Oh, feeling poor Kyle. Uh, I'm like 85 to 90%. A little, little persistent cough. So you'll hear me. Well, hopefully you won't hear me. I mute the mic so I'm not hacking in everybody's ears. But you're better than you're doing <laughs> on Tuesday for sure. Yeah. Yes. Uh I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling on the upswing. Thank you. If you guys have ever seen Zoolander when it's like <laughs> I've got the black lung pop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um Ryan says, thank you for the explanation. You gotta do we're all happy to to help you out. 
Uh, Love has a question uh, regarding compressor for CO2 laser. Are they necessary? Oh, yeah. Yep. Get one. Get get the dude. I just got that new California air tool. It's so nice, dude. I could could put the one gallon. I got the one. Oh, you got the one? I've got the eight gallon. Yeah, it just, I I don't even care because it turns on and it's like. Very I, Matt's like put, that guy. I could yeah. put a I could put a pillow next to that fucking compressor and leave it on and I can fall asleep. Like it's so, so quiet. It's so nice. My dad worked in industrial painting for like 10 years where the mm-hmm. compressors and by the way, this is like in the 70s and 80s when the compressors literally sounded like jackhammers going off. And the other day he was in the garage and uh, I was doing a, an engrave. And it kicked on, and he didn't know what it was. It was like next to him, and he's like, "What?" I mean, it's, it's about fifty to sixty decibels, just so you guys know. So it's like a, it's like your refrigerator turning on, basically. Yeah. And he literally, like, we were talking just like this, and he's like, "What the? He's like, what the hell is that? You got another fan going? I don't know." And I said, "No, that's the compressor." And he looked down, and he was like, "No, oh, no shit." And it's impressive. oilless. By the way, it's oilless, which is awesome. Yep. The only thing I can tell you, they make two. One is uh, you'll you'll see has a stainless steel tank, and then the other one has an aluminum tank. Mm. Go for the aluminum one because it won't rust. So when you have the water, if you have any uh, humidity inside of the tank, which you're gonna smart, um, it, yeah, the stainless steel rust. Um, but so when I buy my second one, I will get an aluminum one. I think it's like thirty dollars more. It's I didn't see it. that option for the one gallon one, but I don't mind emptying it. Yeah, it's I've a got gallon. the eight gallon. I, you literally yeah. pull the pan and it's like. And then it's empty. So it's just yeah. Like whatever. Uh, uh, but Michael, yeah, do you still it. have that freaking behemoth one? The billion gallon no, fucking sandblaster, monster? dude. Yeah, yeah, dude, it was. No, yeah, you, that was from the sandblaster. I use two uh, quiet. Uh, I have a Makita extra quiet compressor, a mm-hmm. little little oh, a double nice. tube one. Yeah. And then I have the other one. It's like starts with an M, some Japanese. Uh, they do but the it's, they're both yeah, high yeah. end quiet compressors yeah and they because you know i work from home kids mm-hmm. sleeping upstairs you know like and i can't be having you know right going on all shaking the house yeah, yeah. that's it and that's the like, thing too dude i i'm right there with you i'm on the second floor and then my yeah. wife sleeps under the you know right under the shop and then uh the kids are right on the other side of this wall over here so yeah. you know yeah yeah i feel that yeah so i have those extra quiet compressors they work great i know yeah. that Jimmy um, still has a behemoth and that yeah. he's running an airline literally from one side of his garage, snakes around yeah. all his shit all the way over to the other side. So mine does. After he could crawl into it and take a nap. He could crawl into it. Yeah, it's so big. And, I, that's why I said I'm very, very impressed with this California. Uh, the air tools. Yeah, they're yeah. nice. They're very, nice. I'm what, very impressed by that. What are you doing these days, boys? I, I remember we set your air pump up, but I don't even remember what the pump was. It's a, it's a California. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Nope. Yep. It, it rarely even comes on. It just stays full. Yeah. I'm you know, I, I don't, have, just, I, I don't How many have many gallon? One gallon? Uh, I don't even remember. You don't use an air compressor, Kyle? You have the chi- not even the Chinese fish pump? Oh, yeah. yeah I have a oh, okay. one of the okay. style pumps. I yeah. just don't have a full size yeah. compressor yet. Yeah. It's on the list. Okay. Um, what I will add to this conversation is um, you need some kind of air movement. So mm-hmm. you need some kind of like aquarium pump and it's going to range in quality, right? Just like everything else. You're either paying for quality or you're, you're getting by or you're not getting by, which is the worst case scenario. But yeah. um, you need some kind of air movement for one. It keeps your mirrors clean. Um, it, it cleans the, the cutout if you're cutting material. Um, and if you're not doing that, a lot of the time you're singeing the material, which means your edges are going to look like poop. More cleanup too. Yeah. So, no. More work. Yeah. Out. And a lot of the time it results in more cleaning. Um, Don't so just that. a lot of variety, but um, you need something. Have, a compressor is going to give you much better uh, PSI coverage for cuts. Uh, yeah. An aquarium pump, a lot of the time in like dual systems, that'll be for like engraving. Or low if pressure. you're doing acrylic, like, it makes like the most pristine edges. Just I do a yeah. lot of acrylic, and it's like it looks like the uh, polished glass. Um, the other thing I'll tell you too is make sure you read or call your manufacturer about what pressurization your lines can handle. Like the boss behind me can go up to 100 pounds, like 100 psi. Um, not that I would ever need that much, 
But it's one of those things like if you get if you get some machine and just for example, I've got three kids and my daughter comes out and it's like, what's this red knob do? And then there goes one of your lines and you have to replace it. That would really suck. Um, So just a heads up. In all fairness, you also have a machine that's designed for cutting. You have a hundred and fifty. It's a it's a big cutting Um, machine. Most people with a hundred watt or less, you probably won't ever see more than like twenty five psi. Or need more than 25 yeah, it's psi. usually like 30 25 30 and uh the uh the air compressor is going to make your cuts cleaner but another important thing that i i know that you're you're saying but you're not mentioning <laughs> is that it's it needs to extinguish the flames okay so yep. the air yep. the air is what's blasting the flames out i know that well, sounds yeah. that sounds yep. like it does you know more oxygen more flame it's actually Yep. You know, so you have to have it or your flames will rise up, especially with acrylic and other wood and yep. get all over your lens. Yep. And that's, that's it. Well, blow your and the other, yep. the other yep. thing, too, is the blowback. If you've got metal like I use only the blades, I don't I have a honeycomb bed. I've never put it in ever. I just cut everything on blades. And just like he was saying, when you cut the edges, um, you'll literally see like some people say, I don't know how to get rid of these white like singe marks at the where it finishes cutting. It's the air. Yep. Like clean blades and air. Oh. Yep. I the fire thing is huge. I I was using the X tool while we were doing the uh, the review for that, which I'm editing right now. It's coming eventually, guys. I, I wouldn't know what you're it. talking about. I've never it's, had that happen to me. That thing is <laughs> yeah. The diode lasers in general, when you're trying to cut with them, are like are like fire machines. Like they just start fires like every time you try to cut anything with them ever. <laughs> And uh, I, I got the old fish pump, the old uh, fish tank pump, aquarium pump from the Ohm Tech at the shop. And I brought it here and I just converted the line for that. And that barely pushes any air through, but it pushes air through. And all of a sudden, the X will stop making fire. So, you know, I, it, it matters. It makes a big difference. What do we have next, Kyle? We have Clinton. Is there a big difference between a 35 watt and a 60 watt CO2 Galvo? Just mark speed or larger lens availability? Will a 200 lens do uh, not do an entire width of a tumbler? Well, uh, I haven't had a 60 watt Galvo CO2, so I can't really speak on the capabilities of that. But I've gotten all the way around fairly large, like medium to large size tumblers with the 30 watts. I wish I, I think I run into focal issues before I run into power issues uh, where my lines just get so fat because the dot size is getting so big out at the edges of the tumbler. And uh, we're actually Kyle and I are working on procuring some things that will fix that. Uh, but I before I run out of power and I'm, I stop getting through the powder coat, like my lines are getting unusably thick at the edges. So, you know, I. Uh, if I actually had to do a job like that, I would just throw the rotary under the Galvo CO2. It's still going to do it faster and cleaner than the fiber uh, if you only have Galvo lasers. And it's going to definitely do it faster than the gantry because your scan speeds are going to be 10 times faster, even if your rotational speed is not. So there's, it's still beneficial to use it regardless. Uh, I know the price difference between a 35 and a 60 watt, especially with Synrad and coherent RF tubes is vast it's a vast difference in my opinion and i get argued about i get argued with about this a lot but in my opinion i think 35 watts is fine if you're especially if it's going to be a tumbler machine i think i think you're good um but that's that's anecdotal you know pinch of yeah. salt on that pinch of salt on that one i haven't used a 60 watt maybe 60 watts a night and day difference and once one ends up here in the shop i'll you know go back on that and say that i would never take anything under 60 i don't i don't know but uh, so far in my experience the the 30 watts and not 35 mind you minus 30 uh, has been has been excellent it's been wonderful yeah so, um yeah. hopefully we'll be able to shed some more light on a 60 watt in the future yep um next up john uh, watch Mike's 10 reasons video. I watched it sometime back. Good stuff. We agree. Yeah, definitely go check that um, out. Again, yes. Michael Mullins, guys, laser engraving 911 on YouTube. He's the only one here on Laser Source at the moment that isn't like directly affiliated with Laser Everything someday. Go give his channel some love. Uh, he deserves it. He's got a lot of really great content. Very different uh, from what we're doing over here at Laser Everything. Very, very different 
quality <clears> content. <throat> so if you want to broaden your horizons and, and watch some new stuff, go check out Michael's uh, channel. Again, it's Laser Everything 911 on YouTube. Matt, love, love has a question for you, and she's calling you out. Didn't you have to tie uh, the, the strings on, Matt? Uh, <laughs> I'm, talking... uh, I'm not warning it. I, I'm just playing with it. Uh, uh, yeah, by the way, I have 10 of them right now, literally sitting here tied. So, boom. Boom. <laughs> boom. Yeah. <laughs> like, I found, I figured out a way to tie them nice and quickly, even with my crappy hands. So, is that, is that, is that job still not done, bro? Nope. I told you, like, the, the, it's literally one of those ones that I'm just doing as an ongoing job because oh. they said they don't need them until December 14th. So, it's mm. kind of like when I come out here and I'm on days like this, this is perfect. Last night, I woke up, I fell asleep. Yeah, pretty much. I, uh, just sprinkling in because then, like, so yesterday I, at work, I had a lady who's like, Hey, I need trophies by like Friday. Can you do that? And I was like, yes. And then uh, when I went to go deliver some cutting boards, there was a lady who was like, hey, can you make me stuff for my wedding? Um, And I said, sure. When is it like March or April or something? She was like, well, it's December 17th. And I was like, "Um, okay. (laughs) Because it's just like, it's hard to turn down money when it's just sitting there. And Acrylic is my thing, man. Like I, I got it just sitting. Michael there. just looked down. He was like, "Yes." No, I was actually looking at my calendar when you said that, and I have this mark on my calendar. By the way, on the fourteenth of December, and it says it's a reminder for me. It says start to jobs. limit jobs. Yep. <laughs> it's literally yep. to remind me to start yourself. saying no. Yeah. What's yeah. funny is my yeah. wife literally today said, "Just like last year, you need to pick a day that tells us uh, tells people no." And I was yeah. like, okay, yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. So I have yes, a ma'am. limit. I have like a soft stop. That's the start. And then the next week, uh, I think it's the beginning of the week. It just says no. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. And what's funny is so the best part too is I told her yes, thinking that I had two weeks to get that done. And I was like, I can work in some uh, four 12 by 18 sheets of acrylic. No big deal. She literally sent me a message yesterday. It's like, hey, here's the one thing you asked for. Um, can we get this by this weekend? That'd be so great. I just, yeah, I just said, I, I said, well, but she's a very, very sweet person who has helped me with a lot of things. So I just said, I will do my best to get them to you ASAP, which is not a yes, but it's not a no. And I will try to get it worked in, but you know, we'll, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, super sticker from love. Thank you, love. Yay. I, thanks. Can love. anybody see it? Can anybody love. describe the sticker to me? It it's is uh, a pair doing the oh, nice. Very nice. Thanks, yes. love. We appreciate having very- you by earlier. We were talking. I just want to throw this comment up really quick. Uh, we were talking about uh, Jimmy giving stuff away for free to try to get more people to get stuff. Mike C says Jimmy uses the drug dealer business model. I love that description. And, uh, I'm, I'm stealing hit. it, and we're going to call it that from now on. Everybody is to refer to the way he does man. business as the drug dealer business. I, I'm the, I'm the, okay, I would be the norm or whatever, but... but <laughs> Literally, but listen, he's, like, he's like... No. Okay, okay, like, okay. Listen. Say I wanted to try to make some sales, like, say, with certain... Put him in the back seat. So I would go, I would go, I had my buddy, say, okay, I'll meet me at the bar 10 minutes early. I said, okay, so I'll make a sign, because I know these people like this sort of team so i'll go in there and hey how you doing i'll give him the sign order i'll buy him dinner and stuff like that boom i'd make 30 sign orders in one night so i'm kind of cheating but but i did it it cost me it cost me a cost me a couple drinks and and i bought him dinner and we sat there shot the shit and people just keep coming at me and i'm like oh my god by the way jimmy has a friend who comes up and very loudly says where can i get such wonderful items (laughs) no (laughs) nope he just said he opens it up because because you you always go there on game night that's what you do so he opens it up he asks the bartender to turn it on for him so they'll turn it on he'll hold it up and boom there you Jimmy's go. Jimmy's got tactics. Um, my the, guy, the, guy, well, the guy leaves. My buddy when you light it up in a, in a bar myself. full of drunk people, it will look cool and people will come talk to you for sure. Hey, it's hyper, all about the money, right? <laughs> hyper quick answer. Mike C is saying, I didn't see 1090 on their page in reference to the DBY glasses. Uh, make sure you're looking on a desktop because I'm pretty sure that the graphs are uh, uh, cut off uh, on mobile. So uh, They're, sure they're like smart objects that. that you mouse uh, over. 
Another one that I want to mention really quick, Joel is asking, what is the group's thoughts about using a single axis DRO to accurately get the focal distance for larger lenses like the 300 millimeter? That's fine. That's fine. But remember, if you're just going off of the focal distance on the lens, there are two key things to remember. One, the focal distance on the lens is an approximate focal distance. They all say the same thing, and they are different. Every individual lens is going to be plus or minus 5 to 10 millimeters. So you have to measure it at least once. Okay, you got to get a measurement. You have to know. Um, you can do your testing. You can do the live focus method. Um, but however you want to do it, that's a 300 millimeter <laughs> stick right there, and you can cut the focal <laughs> stick. Or or yes. you can use the, the DRO. But remember also... The approximate focal distance listed on the lens is the distance from the mirrors to the surface that you are engraving, not from the lens to the surface you are engraving. The, the black part, uh, the black part of the where the lens is inside, that's not touching the lens. It's, so. it's literally the mirrors. So if you look up inside the Galvo scan head and you see the two little mirrors right there, then yep. you have your y-axis mirror and you have your x-axis mirror. The x-axis mirror is typically the lower one. It's that to the material. That is what that approximate, and it's not even exact, approximate focal distance is referencing to. Yep. So make sure that you measure accurately. Once you're done... <clears throat> Go nuts. Uh, use a draw, use a focal stick, guess, uh, whatever. Just measure once. Yeah, I use rule. I use clear acrylic. I have them right here. Oh, oh, oh no. Hey, can I have one of those oh. hats? <laughs> did, you, did he just let loose the, uh, the beast the hat right there? Wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the um, beast is dead. I think I this is from uh, uh, Alex and Michael days, too. Is it not, Michael? Uh, the, it the old. Be. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. You, you you mark until you're in focus. You slap that down on the material, and you basically you're measuring the meniscus of the Correct. lens, right? Correct. Uh, so you just kind of look dead on. You try to find right where the lens dips over, and it's straight. Uh, and you know, measure in millimeters. Don't sit there and try to guess sixty fourths of an inch or whatever on a <laughs> fucking ruler. Just measure in millimeters, and you know, get your get your full of this up. Uh, distance that way but then if you want to use a dro i mean you know whatever yeah i just i want to throw this up here real quick too we got someone just joined the lma today hey and so i wanted to answer his question the awesome. difference between 80 millimeter rotary chucks the price difference between 160 and 350 looks like the same model do you guys know of any differences not really chuck's I mean, a chuck it, yeah chuck's a chuck especially that since is. you're only typically moving in one direction even shitty stepper motors are going to do the same job as the expensive ones. So ultimately the, the <laughs> difference is usually either the chuck itself, which usually there's not a difference or the motor uh, or the stand it's on the, there. Mm -hmm. There's really only three components. Um, and let's face it. If the stepper motor sucks, you can upgrade it. Yeah. Or just, you can just order. It. I mean, they're now. not. Yeah. They're not that expensive uh, compared to the cost of the machine. And relatively, they're easy to right? replace too. Like they're you not can get a replacement much. stepper motor that that that's good quality for like between twenty and forty bucks. So yeah. it it's really not too bad. Um, so if you end up with a crappy one, it's not the end Especially of the Especially for Galvo lasers, I would just get the cheap one. What about you, Michael? Do you have just? Are you still you using like big, heavy, just paperweight chucks, or are you? going with some expensive um, fancy shit. You know, I have a couple of specialty chucks that fit within the chuck. You know, I still have the same rotary for the fiber. I I really don't use it that often. Yep. Um, but I, I did have a job where I had to buy an additional chuck that fit inside that chuck because it had wider jaws and some bracelets and it I needed yeah, just yeah. I don't think it needs Meh. to be uh, to put too much thought into the rotary. Most of them are going to do what you need them to do unless you're really into like doing outside of rings and you have to have a pattern match up like perfectly, you know, you might want to invest in a little better rotary. Yeah. If you're going to be doing that kind of stuff. Chill. So Ron says, what do you do if you don't have a core file? Go, go to the links I dropped above. Yep. Scroll up. They're like two comments above you. Yep. Yep. Uh, there's two there. One goes to a Lightburn video and mm -hmm. the other goes to the, 
uh, Lightburn for Gantry, or oh my god, Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. Um, and there you go. Yep. Get it together, Kyle. Mike says, Did you go by the chart instead of the ranges listed? I see now the chart goes to 1100. Yes. Yeah, I, I usually go by the chart. I mean, the, the, the listed ranges are just what they're backing. So, you know, that's like their official, this is what we promise it blocks, right? But the, the chart yeah. is still measured the same way they got those guaranteed values. So it's not any more or less reliable than the guaranteed values that was done. And those values were found using the same testing methods. So uh, that said, you know, I sure I go by the chart. Uh, Lowell says, interested in purchasing a UV and a CO2 Galvo, but I'm unsure I want to buy both at the same time. Will the UV be sufficient to pass on the CO2 Galvo? Currently have a CO2 gantry and a fiber. What do you think, Matt? Um, How are you feeling about your UV purchase? So I think the UV purchase that I bought is definitely a great thing for me because I really have never had an option to do glass and crystal. Um, mm -hmm. I just really don't like the products that I made with the machines that I had. Um, mm -hmm. So really, I guess my answer to it would be, uh, what is it that you're trying to do? What are you trying to make? And what's your process that you currently have for the stuff, you know, for that situation? So I do tons of wood, um, like olive wood and all kinds of engraving. Um, but the thing is, I also do a ton of cups. And so I can tell you right now, the UV gave me a completely new direction to go, and I'm really excited for it. Um, and it also, I got just because, and I, I mainly bought it because Christmas ornaments, and I've gotten $2,000 worth of Christmas ornament orders. Um, so it pretty much not paid off, but I mean, it definitely took a big chunk out of the cost of the machine. Um, so that's good. Uh, but the other thing is, like, for me, I mainly do tumblers and um, wood products, right? So... CO2 Galvo should have been my first one, but at the same time, I also have a couple of different companies around me that I know I'm going to go pitch some glass items to. So really, that's my answer is, what are you going to be able to make with it? If you're trying to make a business out of it and do production run stuff, um, is it going to up your ability to uh, you know produce products quickly? Um, if it is, and that's what you're doing and you're trying to do, then go that way. If you're trying to branch out into new materials and new items, then I would say UV is a really neat and unique way to go. Um, it's going to put you, it also gets rid of the, having to have a sandblaster and stuff like that. So, I mean, it mm -hmm. kind of helps take care of a couple of things that way. So kind of a long answer, but I'd, I'd like to just add to that too, that, um, please keep in mind guys, CO2 Galvo is not CO2, uh, CO2 lasers are continuous wave lasers, which means once they start firing, they do not stop firing <clears throat> until it reaches the end of the command that told it to fire. CO2 Galvo lasers are pulsed like fiber lasers and typically cannot reach maximum pulse energies, even at high wattages, that will give you a nice result on glass. So even if you're used to doing glass on a CO2 gantry machine and you get good results on a CO2 gantry machine, CO2 Galvo, when it comes to glass and crystal, is a completely different beast. If you have any plans at all to do glass work, Go with the uv the co2 ga uh, galvo will not work for you um yeah. just throwing that out there a lot of people think oh I'll just you know i do glass on my co2 now nice. i'll get the co2 galvo and i'll start whipping glass stuff out and that's not somebody make me big that's no, a good distinction Alex. yeah yeah it's Very really good. important it's really important yeah. to know that um so you know yep there's a, there's some uv work for you guys and uh kyle i'm gonna gonna have you move Thanks. us keep moving us along we're uh three minutes out here. I want to try to burn through as much of this as possible. We want yes, to make sir. sure we get these guys uh, their help. Love says, any recommend recommendations for a Mirror 7? Uh, I have the 9. It's good. I like it. Seven. I think it was the difference. Things, <laughs> a I like smaller. it too. <laughs> I like it too. Yeah, Boy says the Mirror 9 as well. He yep. seems to like it. Crushing it. Crushing it. Sweet. So uh, check that yes. out. Yep. Um, speed running. Go watch the mirror nine review. We have an affiliate link down in the description. Skipping comments. <laughs> uh, Jack says it. I first had a K40 with no air. It made a tall flame. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, K40 days. Did yep. you see the X mode just announced an automatic fire extinguisher using CO2 cartridges? Oh my god, that sounds like such a bitch. 
that sounds like something they would need. I, Did you see um, X-Tool just announced an automatic fire extinguisher? Um, oh, I, a good one. Russ says, oh, oh God. Uh, just really quick, one of the, I, I guess you guys can watch the review when it's done, but one of the things that's been pissing me off about the X-Tool is the sensitivity of the flame detection. So, like, if it just gets, like, a little bit too hot, it's just like, and it's just like, start over, nope, denied. So I've had to turn it off over and over and over again just to get it to finish jobs. If it was that, but blowing CO2 constant, like blowing a CO2 cartridge every time it did it, I think I would go, I think I'd throw it in the garbage. Just mm. saying. Okay. I, I have to throw a quote in now. No stairway. Denied. <laughs> yeah, uh, nice. Rust Patch says, what are blades? Blades mm. are these little like triangle shapes that I'm not run even set up to show that right now. Yeah, it, it's hard to show right now, but I will explain. Uh, it runs from the front to the back of your machine and it goes like this and it mm -hmm. supports the material at the tip. So ideally it will just give you less, <laughs> just the tip, uh, okay. less, uh, less contact uh, on the material. So when you're cutting, um, it leaves less marking underneath the material. Um, so if you go to like OM Tech's website or AI, somebody, <laughs> oh, there you go. There's some it blades. Looks, it looks yep. like these. Those are blade table. Yeah. Yes. If you look under your honeycomb table, you might have one. Uh, but I literally have a video on the yes. channel called Surprise Blade Table because I found out that my own tech had one. I one remember day, that. And I had no idea it was down there. So, um, yeah, they, they look like this. Usually this one in the middle right here, but they could look like any of these. All right. That's it. David says I order a camera from Lightburn, got the 85 110. Uh, yes. The answer is yes. It'll work. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I have the 85. It works fine. Yeah. yeah Jim uh, actually has the 85 now because I, I gave it to him. It works fine. Um, we got to talk, about, we gotta talk yeah. about cameras next time in systems. And the, uh, I think that would be a good topic. Uh, like their cameras, like, their pluses and their limitations. Like camera job yeah, cameras? cameras yeah. that are built yeah. into yeah. systems. Like, I, I think we should talk about the pluses and the minuses of those. I, the, your tone makes me yeah. makes it sound like you don't necessarily like the overhead do you like the overhead cameras do i yeah I uh they awesome. can come in handy but there are limitations and a lot of the manufacturers don't tell you about those yeah we can definitely and talk that, about and that. that's and that's what i want to expose in a way by Ooh, the way an next, video, next video on uh laser engraving 911 10 reasons why companies who use these cameras fail <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, ben, just heads up yeah. Ben says, can I get a cleaner cut with a 100 watt versus a 30 watt fiber, maybe with less dross? Dross is the bone, bane of my existence, cutting and marking gold and silver. Oh, my existence. Is he talking um, about slag? Yeah, I think yeah. he's talking about slag. That's, that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. So uh, with a 100 watt, um, you, you have obviously more power. And with more power, you can run more speed. Uh, you can run a, a more aggressive wobble without... Um, I mean, it's going to add time to it, but with the added wattage, you can you can burn through faster anyway. Um, so it, it's not about quality with the 100 watt versus the 30 watt when it comes to cutting like that. It's more about time savings and what that means to you and your bottom line. And if that's I would, important, I would say slightly nicer, much faster, right? Yeah, yeah it's it's way more about speed, um, in my opinion, when it comes to that. Um, if you're doing something like copper, um where uh you're getting a lot more reflective energy off of it you're going to be able to beat into the copper a lot more efficiently with 100 watt versus a 30 watt especially if you're using a slightly bigger lens mm -hmm. um, because you're able to add more power uh behind it to back up that that bigger lens um so you're gonna find that you're cooking the the material less as well uh in order to get through it um mm -hmm. Well, and with greater power, also comes greater responsibility. I was gonna say it, dude. That's such a dad joke. <laughs> there's, there's love, love says I have the Mirror Seven coming, but that question <laughs> was regarding a compressor for it. Uh, a, a good number of us will just stand behind the California Air Tools on that. Uh, yep. Whether you get Two a one places, gallon, an eight it. gallon, four gallon, whatever. Yep. So with uh, with the mirrors now, the the way they have them set up you have like a, an aquarium pump built in, but you have the ability to add compressor <laughs> uh, off the input jack on the back 
perfect for uh, for cutting pressure. Right. So the the aquarium pump gives you like um, what we were describing before is like the the cleaning pressure or the safety mm-hmm. pressure to keep the the flames out during an engrave. Passive. And yeah. Keep the lens clean. Yeah. Um, you have the ability of running the compressor into the back through like a, a little compression port. It's just a um, quick release. Yeah. 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 Yep. And th- when like you basically enable um, air assist and light burn, it should trigger mm-hmm. the, the high pressure for cuts. Um, that, and we're going to keep, we're right. going to keep whipping. We're going to keep whipping yep. 499 yep. super sticker from hey, beam it up. Beam it up. Thank, you, dude. Thanks, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And like uh, we also have, uh, all right. So last question, guys, last question. Oscar Goddard. I'm a newbie. I am doing personalized laser engraved leatherette mainly. I want to try tumblers, glass, wood, etc. I have a cloud ray, rachis, 50 watt fiber. Do you think it will work with all of these options? Um, you can get away with tumblers, but it's not fun. Glass, no. Uh, there's workarounds, but they're shitty and inconsistent. Uh, wood, Maybe if you have really high frequencies, but again, it's kind of shitty and inconsistent and it varies a lot from wood to wood. So all of that stuff would do great on a gantry CO2 system. You can spend a million dollars on it. You can spend two dollars on it. You know, you get an ohm tech, you get an epilogue, whatever. Uh, Gantry CO2 will cover all of those options. UV will cover most of those options. The only one I would argue against and I haven't tested this extensively would probably be tumblers because the whole point of using the CO2 is that the CO2 isn't going to mark the metal. The UV will, um, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, neither here nor there right now. I think I think you want a gantry CO2. If you're on a tight budget, check out like the desktop Omtex. You can get them for like two grand. They take a little love. They need a little <laughs> TLC to get them up and running. Or you can go the, the love route and pick up something like a mirror five or a mirror seven if you want something mid grade. Or Michael just got the uh, the fusion edge. Is that yeah. is that what it is? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And the, yeah. that you said that started around ten ish on those. <laughs> no, no, twelve, fifteen. No, twenty. Keep going. Keep this going. is why we what don't talk that? about epilogue on this epilogue. channel. Right. Keep what was the epilogue maker one that was like ten grand? Oh yeah, that they, they do have that out now. So check into that. There's okay. actually a. Uh, there's another one they have out that is closer to the 10, 12 range. Not an affiliate. Uh, just by know, the way, no. Yeah, like don't burning do all that money. Yeah, they they don't just, do affiliates. They, they're they don't like, play that game. Fuck you. We're too fancy for that. Yeah, they're too yeah. fancy. My two cents on that one. My yeah. two cents on that one is if you're trying to make your money, like this CO2 has more than paid itself off twice in the year and a half I've had it or two years I've had it. Um, so I, like it does everything that you just put on there. Like Alex was saying, the CO2 gantry is just super versatile and not only does it do all the engraving but the cutting which you don't even realize how much stuff you can personalize and cut and do so just saying oscar you need a co2 gantry buddy yep co2 gantry sounds like the way to go uh ben c says thank you guys by the way you're awesome lma for life we love to hear it guys (laughs) um if you if you love the channel and you want to support it we are a viewer supported channel uh so you guys you're you the lma members are the reasons that we we all get to come here and hang out and do this uh, every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 p.m. EST uh, and all the other content we put out on the channel, which has not been a lot because I've kind of had my hands tied and Kyle said his hands tied. We're trying to bump like a lot of reviews out all at once and it's been a little ridiculous, Uh, but we're here, we're alive and we're working on lots of cool new stuff for you. Promise it's coming soon, Uh, update shortly. If you want to support that and make sure we can keep doing it, go check us out over at masters.lasereverything.net. I'm not going to talk about it a lot right now, but the marketplace is coming along very well. So if you're into selling engraving blanks or jigs, and you want to participate in that community, reach out to me somehow, and uh, maybe I will send you an invite link to be a vendor. Uh, that could be that could be cool for you. And what else do we got? Links to the Facebook and Discord down in the description. Go check those out. They're free. Great help. Super fun. Uh, Michael's channel, Laser Engraving 91 one i hope we see some fiber content are we gonna see some fiber content soon is that coming possibly that you know i'm gonna come up with something weird with the fiber. michael's gonna be like how to co2 fiber vanilla. with a laser yeah. and color for less than 4.99 that's <laughs> plus uv yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. exactly uh, go watch go watch my his 
fucking thumbnails piss me off. They're like, it's like a rainbow and then like a huge explosion. And it's like, 911, <laughs> get your laser profit. Yeah, oh, dude, no wait, money. If, you, it's, if you're mad about my thumbnails, wait till you see my next bro, one that's going to drop in a your few thumbnails, oh, <laughs> Your thumbnails are the Rex Quan Do of thumbnails. <laughs> Nice. You, know <laughs> you want to be an amazing person? Right. <laughs> Forget about it. That's all I've got, guys. Uh, you can find the rest of these dudes, places. Whoa. Matt's a DLC. Whoa. <laughs> Douchebags. Uh, it's a love-hate relationship at, at the various places. He loves I, to hate us. We were making fun of you the other day, boys. I don't even know what your no. What's your business called? I don't even know the name of your business. Is it just I'm voice engravings? Negative. Voice engraves? It's, it's not even mine. It's my girlfriend's. I'm a Seiko Custom Designs because I'm mm. a Seiko means hope in, in her uh, parents' native language. Chill. Chill. Right. Okay. So Check that out. Really Maybe we'll yeah, throw a crazy. link to that in the description. I don't think I've ever even seen your website. And uh, no, no, no. All we're doing is face. We're building our uh, spot. Uh, Spotify, Jesus Christ, <laughs> Shopify. Shopify, Shopify. There we go. We're still working. I got you, boys. I got you. Work in progress. Work in Matt's progress. at ELC Creations. Uh, Kyle is standing dutifully by my side everywhere I go, and Jimmy is about four steps behind me. So this is called um, I'm a motherfucking hustler. Dot com. <laughs> Jimmy's like, wait. This is just um, the candy oh, man. The candy I man. I want to do, but well, one of the things we'll do soon is we'll do, let's help Jimmy set up an Etsy shop. He still needs, I just gave him my photo booth. He got a hand me down little fucking fold up photo booth. He's going nice. to take some pictures for listings and we're going to yep. come on. We're going to do a live stream. I don't care if it takes eight fucking hours. We've done eight hour live streams before mm. and we're going to build an Etsy shop for Jimmy to use. Christmas and morning. Be here, guys. He's got oh, shit, dude. Uh, <laughs> uh, and he's going to understand it before we end the stream. So that's going to be a that's going to be a fun oh, one. So we're going to get you all four hours, up. bro. We're going to get you all set up, man. By the uh, way, another thing. Mm. If we didn't get to your question tonight, join the Discord, their face group, Facebook group. One of yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, we do our best to help out there, and the community is also great at helping each other. Community is very active the on the yes. on the Facebook and Discord. And if you if you need more direct help uh, and you want to support the channel while you're at it, like we mentioned, the LMA great place to go. Kyle and I are a little more attentive there, just because you know, obviously. Uh, but uh, that's smash all I got. The like button, smash the like button, guys. Don't smash it. Don't yes. smash the like button. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah, don't smash the like button because uh, this video is just going to get deleted anyway. When oh. the edit goes up, come back and smash the like button and leave smash a comment. Like if you smash the like button early, it'll help more people find the live stream. But if you smash the like button when we're closing out, you don't really do anything. So never mind. Um, <laughs> smash it when the edit goes up, though. Uh, I think I think that's all I've got. Michael, you got any any famous last words for us before you head out? No. No, nope, fuck yeah, you. I'm good. All right. Have a good night, everybody. We love you. We'll see you in the next Bye, one. Everybody. Later. Peace. See ya.